before 18 years. We're back in 2004 in Manchester. Two little tiny and adorable twins were born. The questions are, why and who is their father? After almost one year, another baby girl came to our world. There were the same questions about her too. Getting back to the present, Liverpool. The weather was perfect that day, the sun was shining, the birds were warbling, all seemed to be normal, as normal as being an orphanage. The clock on the wall just read 8 a.m. Rose awake. She had a feeling it was neither bad nor good. The sure thing was that she was finally free to leave that place and get out in the real world. Everything began when Rose was only 14 months old. Her mother left her at the orphanage because she wasn't able to keep her for unknown reason. Rose, already by the age of six, wanted to get out of that place and find her real mother. She was searching for years for any possible information that would lead, lead her towards her goal. All the books of the library had been read. All the employees had been asked. Rose didn't manage to reach a conclusion until the computers appeared. In 2015, the orphanage was full of high-tech computers and Linda was free to search the whole internet. She was searching for hours without finding anything useful about her mother. On the 4th of November, on her birthday, she actually found something that undoubtedly wasn't anything that she heard every day. Early in the morning, Rose had a feeling that that was the day of finding something unexpected. It's true, it was. She found her mother's name on a sack, but the news wasn't that good. On the side were written some things that Rose couldn't believe with her own eyes. She read that her mother had been raped by an unknown man in a hotel in London. The news was shocking, but Rose found the courage and continued searching for more until she found her previous house where she and her mother used to live. Manchester Nancy and Jack, two orphan siblings, just got up. Today, on the 24th of May, they were going to celebrate their birthday. They were about to be 17. These two siblings actually never wanted to fight their real parents because they were claiming that it was undoubtful. Both were miserable and pessimistic as personalities. But something changed that day. Nancy started thinking more positively, so she made a decision. In 2017, she tried to escape from the orphanage in order to find some information. Her brother didn't know anything about that, but who knows, perhaps instinctively, the same day Jack was searching both library and computers with the hope that he will find something useful. Nancy went to the neighborhood that they used to live in. Two hours before, when she was still in the orphanage, she managed to steal the files that the principal had in her office. These documents had all the information that Nancy needed and she actually found the house where they used to live with her brother. Nancy and Jack were only one year old when they got into that orphanage, so Nancy was not able to remember anything from that place. While she was asking the neighbors about this house and her mother's name, Matilda Baker, Jack was searching on the internet with no results. But Nancy had found years ago her mother was raped, but no one knew who did. And it was true. Her mother, the same awful night, had described everything that had happened to that neighbor. After one hour, Nancy got back to the orphanage, being excited that she had found so much information. She went near her brother and she whispered in his ear all the things that happened that day. Jack's face was filled with a big, bright smile, while at the same time some tears formed in his eyes. The encounter. A year had passed and Rose, Nancy and Jack had left home from their orphanage. The twins had already decided to visit their house when Nancy found them. The past one year was very difficult because they had to manage being in the outworld without anyone finding a place to live and work for the bread and butter. Rose, after tough work, achieved her goal and got into Yale University in the USA with a scholarship. The first year she was trying to settle in. However, she couldn't handle being away from her home and she finally decided to come back. On the 1st of September, the three of them accidentally decided to come across their old house. That was the first time they saw each other. That was the first time that Nancy looked Rose's eyes and fell in love with her.
but that is not all. Zack, when saw Rose's long red hair and those beautiful green eyes, felt his heartbeat beating so strong and fast that he couldn't control it. Yes, he fell in love with Rose too. However, Zack and Nancy weren't the only ones that felt something powerful. Rose had the same feeling, but not for Jack. Nancy was the one. I know that right now it sounds so weird and complex, but this is actually what happened. They weren't able to say anything for two minutes, until Rose decided to speak. Who are you? Oh, um, right. I'm Jack and this is Nancy. Nice to meet you guys. So what are you doing here? We were just visiting the city and happened to cross the street. Nancy answered because she didn't want to tell the truth. What a coincidence! Me too. Not visiting town, just crossing the street. Neither Rose wanted to reveal anything. Well, that sounds nice, I guess. And I believe we should probably grab some coffee in order to, you know, better meet each other. Nancy answered while she was looking at Rose's eyes. They all agreed and went to the nearest cafe. They talked a lot, for hours. They learned so many things about each other's life. But the most weird one, and the one that made them feel more comfortable and safe, was that all of them had lived in an orphanage. They found a lot of similarities about life, preferences and that stuff, as a result being amazed of how fast you can meet and talk and learn and fall in love with a person. When the twins returned home, they discussed what happened. Nancy told her brother how she feels about Rose and that she was excited about going out tomorrow with her. Jack didn't react as well as Nancy had imagined. He couldn't believe that both were in love with the same person. He was so mad on the inside, but he couldn't destroy his sister's happiness, so he stayed silent. He commented on her and went to his room. 2nd of September The next day had come. Rose was looking forward to seeing Nancy again. They met at the park this time. Both looked amazing, full of joy. They discussed how they ended up in those orphanages, who their parents were, and how they feel in general. Neither Rose nor Nancy wanted to analyze what had happened to their moms. The only words were about that they never met them, even when they got out of the orphanage. That was the best day of their lives. Rose drew Nancy to her house. When Jack opened the door, Rose kissed her. That moment, Jack's eyes were full of jealousy. After an hour, he grabbed his things and ran away from their home. He had been driving, driving for hours until he came back to Liverpool. He was drunk and the only thing he needed was only a hug. So he decided to go to Emily's house. Emily was Nancy's best friend that she met right after getting out of the orphanage because they used to be roommates. He was desperate. He knocked. Emily was surprised, but she told him to come in. He explained to her everything and then he hugged her. The thing is that Emily was in an emotional situation too, so she could fully understand him. They opened a bottle of red wine, but it didn't help at all. They started crying together for a couple of minutes. There was just a moment that they looked inside each other's eyes and felt weak. Then Jack unconsciously kissed her. They ended up sleeping together. 3rd of September. The next morning they woke up so confused about what had happened the night before. Jack got dressed and got his things. He left her house and turned back home. He saw both girls sitting on their sofa. Where have you been all night? I was so worried about you. His sister asked him while she was hugging him. A friend of mine called me because he had just broken up and he needed some company. Jack answered nervously and greeted Rose. The rest of that day was as normal as the other that had passed. The real problem would come in three months. 15th of December Some months had passed and Rose hadn't stopped searching about what happened to her mother. She was keeping all that stuff in a box inside her closet. The news about Jack wasn't that good. 
After that night in Emily's house, his life changed for good. Two months later, more specifically on 23rd of November, he had a call from Emily. The words that his heir heard were, I'm pregnant, Jack, and he passed out. As you can easily understand, the last thing that he was worrying about was to find his mother. Likely, Jack was a responsible man. He and Emily decided to stay together and keep the child, no matter what. In Nancy's mind, the last four months have been only about Rose and their relationship, so neither of them wanted to worry about finding her mother. One day, on 15th of December, Nancy, while searching for a shirt in Rose's wardrobe, found a little something that almost made her scream. Nancy knew that Rose was continuing the research about her mother. And guess what? In all of those papers, she saw her mother's name that she had found on the files when she was at the orphanage. The shock was huge. For some minutes, she felt like she was unconscious, like she didn't know where she was or what year it was. After some minutes, she got out of the room. She went to the living room and left the house without goodbying Rose. She was trying to avoid Rose for a while in order to decide whether she will tell her or not. Rose had been calling her but not. She couldn't find her. After a week, she made the decision. The truth is that Rose's reaction was expected. She sat on the sofa and didn't say a word for about 30 minutes. She went to her room and told Nancy to leave. Nancy called her brother. She told him the news. Jack not only felt unlucky, but disappointed and sad too. Nancy and Rose were apart for almost six months, but sometimes people are meant to be together, no matter, no matter what difficulties appear in their lives. So, in August, they saw each other again in London. It was awkward for both of them. In spite of the awkwardness, Nancy spoke. I know that it's unbelievable what we found out a few months ago, but I love you, and I couldn't live without you. Rose didn't say anything, she just kissed her. The surprise. The two girls, after some weirdness for Nancy, Jack's objections, finally got back together and decided to, so to do something that nobody would expect after all of this. They made a plan to find their mother. Oh, I forgot. And Jack had already told them that he wanted to stay out of this because he and Emily were waiting for a baby to, bo to be born. The girls had been searching for over a year but nothing. They couldn't find any information about the name Matilda Baker. They were desperate. But one day... The last time that they crossed by their old house was seven months ago. So they decided to visit again that day. But the surprise that they would see was gigantic. They saw a woman touching the door with nostalgia in her face. At some point, all of their eyes met. Nancy had the same look as that strange woman had. She came closer to them. She looked them in their eyes ardently, And then hugged them. Yeah, you understood that correctly. That woman was Matilda Baker, their mother. The moment of re realization was full of complex feelings. At first the two girls were shocked and cold, but then an outbreak of tears appeared in their faces. It took her a few minutes to speak, but it wasn't necessary. The first sentence, though, was Where's Jack? I want to see Jack. Girls listened to her and brought her straight to Jack. The four of them were finally back, together after almost 20 years. The following days were just amazing. They met each other, they discussed for unlimited hours about their past. All were perfect, until Rose said something that brought silence. And now, ma'am, I believe it's time to tell and answer some things. Sure, what do you want to know, honey? I just wanted to find some answers about the one that hurt you in the past and made you suffer. The one that put you in the horrible situation. And why? Why do you separate us? Why? I knew that someday I have to answer this question. It was silence that followed when two 
rapist names because it was not just one but two came out of Matilda's mouth. All were taken aback, but mostly Jack. Do you want to know why? Pablo and Jason Harrington were the answer. And I repeat, do you want to know who these people are? Emily's father and uncle. Jack had already made his decision. He wanted revenge. The revenge. Jack couldn't kill his child's grandfather, of course, but he could send him to prison, both him and Jason. So, he called the police and made the accusation. He also brought his mother as she was the victim to confirm about the crime. After three months, he accomplished his goal. They had been sent straight to jail. All of them were happy and pleasured. If Jack had another chance to decide whether he would accuse them or not, believe me, he would have chosen not to. Unlikely, these two disgusting men had too much contact in too many places, mostly illegal. After they learned who did the accusation, they sent someone to finish the job which had to be finished 20 years ago. As Rose was walking to visit her mom, she found her dead. The body had been found on the bed. Maybe a symbolism or something. The news, likely for the last time, was shocking. Neither of them could handle that, so they lived apart for a while, as they always do. Rose and Nancy. The two girls stayed together till death. Nothing ever again separated them. They also adopted a little girl and gave her their mother's name in order to never forget her and make the child as strong as her mother was. Jack. Jack lived his entire life with Emily and of course with their beautiful little babies, Christopher and Ian. They were twins. At first it was difficult but when the babies were born they were all gone. Emily and Jack were so happy and in love with each other.